All right, so let's talk Let's talk us through 5.2, number 17. All right. Uh, first, solved it same way you did for 10. Uh, set it to 4y, or I guess I should have done r. I accidentally put y. It should have been r. OK, so we kind of made our substitution. We got our auxiliary equation of 4r squared minus 12r plus 9 equals 0. Yeah, I used the quadratic formula because I guessing and checking on this would be horrible. So okay, um, I ended up getting r equals 3 halves, only r equals 3 halves, because the square root goes to 0. OK, so it's a repeated real root, which means that the solution looks like and this is, again, guys, another one that I would I would just freaking memorize this thing. Yeah. Proving it every time would be horrendous. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, it's honestly, it's a trick anyways. You just remember that this is the case. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be uh, it's a e to the three halves t. Oh, you used c ones. Yeah, I. Yeah. So for the left, I started the equation, but then I clicked off and I wasn't able to click back onto that text box. So I had to start a new text box and that's why the other one isn't fully there. Oh, that's fine though. Okay, so we have, and I guess I'll, I'll adjust to X's to match yours. Again, I'm only writing this down because I'm not sure whether the annotation is visible on the recording. Okay. Um, so we, you got Y is what? e to the 3 halves x? Yeah, e to the 3 halves x. And then what did you do with your constants? How did I find them? I mean, what did you do with them? What was the rest of your y? Oh, it was just my completed y or just for like my incomplete, like it's like c1 plus x c2? Yeah, just c1 plus c2 x. x. Yeah, so this is c1 e to the 3 halves x plus c2 x e to the 3 halves x. I couldn't tell so, you wanted me to explain how I found my constants or. No, I'm going to have you do that next. Um, oh, the annotation scroll with me. That's fun. Um, so that's just out of theorem 5.2.1, right? We're just in part B. And yeah, this is just identically the, you know, solution that you get out of out of that. Does that make any sense? Is anybody confused by that? Okay. There's a so, textbook that does it shows it really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's shown in the textbook. Um, it should be in one of the videos. If it's not, yell at me and I'll put it in. You know. Um, all right. So we got this, mm -hmm. and then how do you how do you solve for the C's? Why am I solving for C's? Uh, well, since it's an initial value, you want to find an exact equation. Okay. So because I have initial conditions, I should be able to solve for the C's. Yeah, which would give you the exact equation. Okay. Um, then what? Uh, well, since they give you Y prime, you're going to want to find Y prime. So. Ooh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, but don't worry, Joe. I have it done for you already. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, so when you're doing this, I would uh, personally... Uh, recommend that you plug in y of zero f equals three first. I did. I did that real realistically. That's what I did. Um, one reason for doing that is you might not have to, like, you might get lucky and make the derivative a little easier. Okay. At the very least, you won't have to keep track of. You might not have to keep track of one of the constants. So in this case, if I plug, uh, if I plug y of zero, right? Mm -hmm. so they tell me y of zero is three, but y of zero is also this thing evaluated at zero. So that's one times C1. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, this didn't make my life a great deal easier, but I can at least scratch the C1 here and say that that's three. Yeah, it doesn't really change anything because that's the easy derivative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So you calculate y prime, and you have that here for me. It's uh, nine halves 
e to the three halves x plus c two three x over two e to the three x over two plus c two e to the three x over two. Okay, so you calculated this, and then what do you do with it? Uh, put in your initial condition, condition, so five halves equals all of that with x is equaling zero. Okay, um, so that would tell me five halves is this crap with x equals zero. So it's nine halves. Zero. And zero and C2. Mm -hmm. uh, so that reads like... C1, yeah. Sorry, say again? Oh, no, sorry. You didn't forget your... I keep seeing your nine halves. I'm like, you forgot your C1. But that's because you already plugged it in. I just multiplied it together already, yeah. yeah. So you got C2 is negative 2. Mm -hmm. So how do you finish this problem off? Plug those constants back into your uh, initial equation. Okay, so ultimately here, I end up with plugging my C2 into my Y that I found earlier. I have y is e to the 3 halves x times 3 minus 2x. Cool. Mm -hmm. Nice work. Um, There's only 22 of these problems. Yep. They're, uh, they're the basis of a bunch of things. Yeah. So, yeah, I would maybe recommend, um, like throwing a quadratic formula yeah. program on your calculator, or looking up a quadratic formula solver on the internet. So or like having the this... TI it's really easy to program. Is it, mm -hmm. I was going to ask if you could like download a program onto it. Just to... You can just write it. You don't even have to download it. It's like five lines. Okay. I don't know how to. Or code. if you have an Inspire, it'll even give you the imaginary. So the, the the eighty four CE will also do imaginary. Yeah, it's um, it's not particularly hard. You just you get out Google like this, and then you do. Ooh, you go to this website, and then you realize you don't need a TI calculator. Oh, I'm sorry. That's... And then he realized that the college syllabus for all of the math classes literally says you require a TI calculator. Yep. You want to know why? Because the college has an agreement with TI. No, it's actually because, so it's because if we list it as optional, the EOPS and um, trio programs can't buy it for the students that are uh, involved in those programs oh. but if i list it as required and then tell all the students that they don't have to have it the eops and trio students can still get their spot for them that's cool um, i'm not sure that's worth it anymore because i think every semester i have a couple students who buy them because they see it on the syllabus and then later realize that i have a deep-seated resentment of texas instruments why wait we're still record are we recording this yeah it's fine it's a nice easter egg um the reason that i have a deep-seated resentment against ti calculators is that those fucking things have been a hundred and ten dollars oh, since yeah. i was in seventh grade mm -hmm. they haven't gotten any better they're the same freaking hardware and they're still $110, in spite of the fact that from Amazon, you can buy a freaking tablet this big for like 60 bucks that'll do, well, who cares? Because it'll go to wolframalpha.com, which is truly all you need. Can't use that on an exam though, Joe. I know, it's the only reason that Texas Instruments still has a hold is because people still require you to um, solve problems on tests that require a calculator. Yeah. And, you know, funny story, teachers who were like interested in student equity could do this thing where they wrote exams that didn't require a calculator. Like, it's not hard. I do it all the time. Because mm -hmm. 
you know, the, th the other thing is, it's really easy to write an exam that doesn't require a TI calculator if you don't own one. <sighs> I don't own one. I don't have one. If I want to get one, I need to go to the math lab and borrow one. Same as you guys. Even like 95% of my homework throughout Columbia, I haven't used in calculator most of the time. I I use a calculator a lot for physics, but that's it. Not even Yeah, I mean it's it, it like the one spot you can reliably find a you know a graphing calculator is on an engineer's desk because the numbers in real life are messy. Yeah. But you can also reliably find Wolfram Alpha bookmarked on their debt on their computer. So I'm not even an engineer and I have Wolfram Alpha bookmarked. Yeah. As as you should. Yeah. All right. Um any other questions on this thing? Mm -mm. 